and welcome back to Breakout. Today, or tonight, we're going to be uh, sorting out some more stuff with thermal expansion. We just broke into that chamber last time, and our automation set up here, aside from having lots of miscellaneous stuff, has got me 25 grains of infinity, or at least I've got a stack and a half of them total now, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to put away some of this stuff uh, that we're not going to need. Um, it can all go away. Maybe need that flux stick back. Yeah, back, and uh, yeah, that can go away. Now, when you first broke into that other room, you will have seen a compactor. Pick that up and also pick up the augmentation gear working die. Now, in order to fit that in there, you need to go and do the quest that gives you the um, hardened upgrade, whatever it's called. Uh, crossroads, was it in here? Yeah, so as soon as you get the gear working die, you get the hardened upgrade kit. Apply that to your compactor and then you can put in that augment and you can get copper gears out. This is the only way to get copper gears. So we're going to be using those copper gears almost immediately to make another machine. We want the magma crucible, and you'll see why very soon. But we have two things to make. We have a redstone reception coil, which is just some redstone, which we've already got, and some gold. That should be easy. Uh, yep, yep, that, that'll do. So you can get made. Okay, and um, let's just get the rest back for a start. And then we just need a machine frame, which is some tin gears. So let's make a few of those uh, with some tin. I should have some. Let's just get 16, so make four gears. I'm sure we'll use them up and that can get processing. And what was the rest that we're going to need? So we need some iron and some glass, it seems. I've got some iron in my inventory and I've got some glass here. So that should be everything we need. Uh, we need one tin gear to get started. Yep, there's our gears quest. And I guess this is a machine frame. I'll we'll just get one and a magma crucible. There we go. So we're just going to knock a hole through the floor. And we are going to um, just extend this leadstone flux duct. And then put our magma crucible down. I also am going to just reset the stuff so it doesn't try to feed in or out of any machines. These are just manual machines for now. Why are we using a magma crucible, you say? Well, you remember a few episodes ago, if you were watching, I made this pyrothium dust. Well, we're going to be using it. So pyrothium has this advantage. We need a two blaze powder, sulfur and redstone. I'm going to make more of this. So uh, I did get some sulfur as part of this. There's our sulfur. Uh, I've got some redstone and some blaze powder. So over here, I should have some more of at least some of that. There's some blaze powder. So we'll only have enough for two more pieces of this. And coincidentally, I have enough redstone to make that. So. That is fine. Can that all combine? Yep. So we end up with six pyrothium dust. If you put that in a magma crucible, if I remember rightly, put that in there, it should convert over into blazing pyrothium, which we should be able to extract, hopefully, with a bucket. Otherwise, I'm going to need to put a, uh, whether it's called, the companion to a magma crucible on top. But let's give this a go and see if I can actually grab that out of there. I won't be able to until this actually fills up. Yep, so each one of these pyrothium dust, you only get 250 blazing pyrothium. We need a thousand for a bucket. So if you put that in here, you'll see that this lava is running low. Now, part of it is it's filling this up. So, but that is now full. And you'll see we're down towards um, a fairly low amount. And if we have a look in here, well, we're out of its buffer. Uh, even though an octatic, its buffer is still large. Uh, up here, let's take a look at these buffers. Are uh, they all full? So this one is filling, so it's pulling from somewhere. And now we're empty on the sieve. So yeah, we, we're going to need a faster way of generating lava. Now, if you want to, you can just add more crucibles. But the uh, pyrothium is five times faster than the lava. So it should be five times as much um, lava coming out. And that should do pretty well for me, because that's pretty much 15 times, um, if you like, uh, you know, just if you get, yeah, so five times, that's five times, that's five times. Yeah, it, it'll be pretty good regardless. Okay, and with four of that process, you can use a bucket to get this uh, out. So there is blazing pyrothium. It is, however, a little bit dangerous. So if you're going to do this, make sure you clean out all the lava first and don't have anything particularly flammable anywhere nearby. So let's just get rid of the lava first of all. Uh, so let's go review and put that in there. This one, whoops, that one in there. Uh, 
Yeah, why didn't that give me... There we go. Okay, should have gone. Okay, and then let us <laughs> try and put this back with the Blazing Pyrothium without causing huge amounts of fire, but fire is probably inevitable at some point. Where is the other block? I... No, I may have been burned up by the lava. Let me just go and get another block before I uh, cause problems for myself. Um, There we go. So, yeah, some of that blocks. And... Yeah. Do I want to put this in here? Well, let's put it down. Yep. Everything burning. Oh, as, as, as normal. Ah. I'm burning. Why? Ugh. Go away. Stop burning. Ugh. Okay, it's left me with one. Let me just eat some food. Now, can I stop this from burning by surrounding it with a rock? Probably, although it may not even be needed. Let's see if we can stop that now. Okay, so is that producing? It's 15 times, 15 times, 15 times. Good. And no more spontaneous fires. Also good. Although if there was, then uh, then I'll just have to eat some. Well, uh, <laughs> surround this all with with rock as much as possible. Uh, I'll leave it alone for now, and if it starts periodic fires, we can come down and firefight if we need to. And that is now producing this probably ah oh, whoop, spontaneous fires. There it goes. Yep, I'm gonna have to surround this with rock. Just bear with me a second while I grab some uh, some of these <laughs> this stuff. <laughs> and uh, get this going. You'll see, however, that um, it can't really supply enough cobblestone fast enough now. So uh, apparently the tier of item duct has no bearing whatsoever on the speed here. So what, what, all we're going to do is just surround all the spaces that did catch on fire with, uh, with rock, or at least a stone block of some kind. And hopefully that will keep everything nice and safe. I hope. We'll keep an eye on it. Anyway, this should start producing more lava here. Once we have this being moved out fast now, the uh, the servo tier should determine how many it actually ejects into the um, item duct. And the item duct, it doesn't matter whether it's opaque or transparent. It only matters whether it's the accelerated variant. So if you look at item duct, there is another kind. Um, it's more expensive to make usually. So impulse item duct, uh, you can upgrade any tier. I think you just need some other stuff. So. Uh, that's the opaque version. We don't want the opaque version. Oh, can I not actually upgrade it? No, I guess not. Uh, I guess I can only make it from the uh, opaque version. Okay, and that can be upgraded from something else. How? Where's the original recipe? If both of those are there, and they're both upgrades, where's the original recipe? They're all input item duct. That's hopefully not incredibly annoying. But oh, it's just fill the recipe. Fine. Fluid transposer was the other the other thing. That's fine. So we just need regular item duct and we can fill it effectively with energized glowstone. And that's rather easy to make because we can just put it into the magma crucible. And uh, that will go up. So if we just go to here and set that to export, we just need well, we need power. And if we do that, let's let's move you over here. And I'm gonna need to whoops. I need to just get rid of that yet for a second. There we go. And we'll hook you up to power in a second. Put me there. And then we said, oh, we need to go right. There we go. So we then need a fluid transposer. That is not going to be too hard to make, I don't think. It'll just need a uh, another set of ingredients. Oops. Fluid transposer. Yes, it's pretty much the same ingredients. We've already made the copper gears. I'm just going to need another machine frame. And another redstone reception coil, which is going to need a little bit gold. What do you got one gold? Uh, what do you got everything else? So let's just get rid of that for a second. And let's get this made. So one of you. And do I have everything apart from the machine frame, which I need the tin gears for, which should be in here. Yeah. There we go. Fluid transposer. One of you. And one of you. So fluid transposer is done. That should go there. And... We should be able to reset it and make sure it inputs from the left. And then we need some glowstone to get this thing going. Uh, how many item items do we have down there? We have four pieces. So I need whatever. Uh, let's just look at item duct. Item duct. So we want uh, the regular stuff. Whatever, whatever it's made. Doesn't really much matter there. Um, so... It needs 200 millibuckets for that. 
How about for the, the stuff that is not opaque? <laughs> How about the stuff for this? Still 200 miller buckets, and we get 250, we get 250 from each glowstone. So if we put four glowstone in, we should get five uh, item ducks worth. And we have um, four right there, so let's put that in. And then we want some item duct, uh, wherever that is. Let's just do a search. I don't want the opaque one. I'd rather like to see the, the stuff, if possible. And there it is. So we've got five item duct, and that will do. Uh, we'll put that in there, and that should um, automatically get turned into... Yeah, there it goes. Impulse item duct. Good. Any more fires? No more fires. But it is still got nowhere near enough cobblestone. I want those to look full. And that should be fine with 16 hardened servo, even with a normal servo should be fine. Um, you'll see this is filling up. So it is still much further ahead than it was. This was nearly empty. So yeah, it is already producing enough lava, but I want this to be faster. I want this to produce lava as fast as it possibly can with three blocks in it, you know, three block space. Uh, that should be fine. Let's just put that uh, there and um, let's just make sure I have a stairway down there. Everything down here is fine. I don't, I'm not really using anything else, you know, any other space. Everything is going to work fine. Then a sub-basement I haven't done anything else with. Uh, just taking some of these blocks, the nether brick, because they were needed for the um, magma crucible. And the magma crucible, obviously, it will make a bunch more things now if you want that to, to, to do that kind of thing. But uh, for the moment, this is the most important one. And there's three, and we should get the fourth one along uh, pretty shortly. Should be done any second. There we go. Four and five. Good. Let's go and see the difference. So get rid of you and you and you. And I need to get in here. I could do with a magnet, but this is... I'm going to have to take this away for a second. Put up and put that back before everything catches on fire. Um, I don't know whether there's a magnet in this pack. Is there? There is. Okay, we've got some magnet options. And uh, yeah, yeah, actually additions. It's the part that I haven't actually opened yet. Or Britannia, the other part that I haven't actually opened yet. Wonderful. So we're not doing that soon. One, two, three, four. There we go. And then we just need a servo on you. And you can supply as fast as you can. Let's see. This should be pretty fast. There it goes. That's much quicker. And it's going to round robin by default. Okay, I'm back to the start again. Uh, well, it's set to 16. If we want to decrease the stack size it sends out, it should try and keep things topped off. And that's probably what I'm going to go for. Yeah, I'll keep it to four. And let's see if that's, uh, that's got any good. All right, so that should be producing enough lava that we have pretty much a uh, permanent supply of lava to the stilling generator. And that's supplying... 120 equivalent of RF per tick or whatever it is. These generators are doing nothing right now, so uh, I think I'm tempted to just take them out. They could supply buckets of lava to them as well, but they'd have to be around this. So I think what I would probably want to do next is create another sterling generator and put it right there and have this thing serve both of them if possible. But you can both go away. I do not need you anymore. Save space wherever possible in this pack, and I just need to get in and uh, sorted. All right, and we don't need that. To, we don't need that at all. Okay, how are we doing with trees? Uh, we have six stacks. Are you maxed out? You probably are maxed out. Uh, maybe not. No, oak wood. That's fine. We are, do we have any soul sand? We do have soul sand, so we're gonna put that through the sieve. And the sieve should have full. Yeah, it does have full. That's fine as well. So let's just make sure the soul sand is done. And we're looking pretty good. All right, so we've got thermal expansion on the go. Does that give us any quests uh, complete? That would be nice. There's our gears quest. We've got some experience from that. Phytogenic insulator is for growing plants. Um, we don't have that yet. Wet work, so aqueous accumulator. Um, we already have, can get water, so I'm not too concerned with that. Satchel, eh, I don't really need that either. Basic machines, on the other hand. Pulverizer and redstone furnace, equivalent of basically the alloy smelter and sag mill. 
It's just the Alice Melter can do more than a Redstone Furnace, but other than that, it's fine. And then extra sources of power, Magmatic Dynamo. Basically, we can feed lava in directly, and that will produce power. Um, doesn't tell me how much power, but other than that, that's possible there. So, yeah, we can already generate power from that. None of those are particularly urgent, but I'll be getting through them. Uh, we need to get through those quests. So we need to get through a few quests to actually get much further, and there is some Endryo ones left. Uh, I did create an, a, uh, an Ender sword, uh, and I also created a Steel sword as well. Um, they are pretty much nearly the same in damage, at least before we actually upgrade them, so I'll leave the Steel sword as it is. And then we can get some Infinity Dust, which we can just grind up in a... a basically in a, in a slag mill. We can grind up some grains of Infinity, and that will turn into Infinity Dust. Also, any ender pearls you're about to get from this, you can grind up into ender dust, and then you can use that to get more diamonds. So if we just grab some diamonds, I'll just upgrade these. Ender dust goes in the middle, I think, and then we just spread you out. And we get eight diamonds. Good. So that's going to be useful. In the meantime, however, take your infinity dust, bring it over here, right-click it inside a spawn chamber, and then wait. <laughs> it can happen pretty much any time. Uh, but make sure you do spot, uh, click it inside a spawn chamber or something like that. The problem I have at the moment, though, however, is my Ender. It says, when powered, Enderman can't teleport one hit when once hit. Extra damage and speed. It's not powered yet. <laughs> so when Endermen spawn, they can immediately teleport away, which is not too good. So we want to actually uh, empower it. Whoops. That's interesting. I'm not sure where that, I'm not sure where that came from. Not in there. Oh, that is looking like a silverfish, but not quite. Uh, or <laughs> stop jumping. It is a silverfish. Good. Well, not good because they normally come after me, but yeah, good ish. Uh, so there are other things that spawn from it, particularly Enderman, and that's something we have to deal with next. So we're going to need to create a vibrant crystal. A vibrant crystal and we're going to need to get enough iron for an anvil i'm sure uh so that a vibrant crystal is just some vibrant alloy nuggets and uh, it's going to be an emerald and emeralds are particularly easy they're easier than diamonds even so we're going to, we get them from uh, actually just sieving and we can put them over here and you can hear footsteps in the background because i've previously spawned stuff <laughs> and we got some emeralds That'll do for that. We just need some um, some of the rest. So we want some gold, uh, seven gold. That'll do. We want some uh, redstone. That's making me paranoid in the background. I can hear it. I can hear you back there, you know. <laughs> and we're going to need some more glowstone. And I'm running out of it. Well, I don't want to sacrifice any more of the built-in lights out here, so we should probably get glowstone the way the pack author wants us to probably get it, than uh, sacrifice things. So sieving uh, crushed netherrack will do that job just fine. And that's really going to annoy me, because I can't get into the Botania one yet, and I think it's in the Botania one, or in the actual editions one. <laughs> it is an Enderman, I think. Um, anyway, uh, I want the crushed netherrack, which we got from underneath, and uh, that's more crushed netherrack. We can just put it in the auto sieve if we want to, or just stand here and uh, and sieve it like this. I'm going to put it in the auto sieve. I'm not going to do anything like that. Uh, that won't take it very long. I'm going to speed it up with by giving it some fish for some unknown reason. That just that's just how things are intended. And it's quite quick. It's make, making glowstone already. You can see we've already got some in here, so it's not going to be too much of a problem. And we'll use those to create the uh, energized. Um, uh, let's have a look. There we go. That should make the precursor metal before we get to vibrant. And vibrant just needs some uh, basically ender pearls. Now you can get that from ender dust and make those up. Or you can, if they choose to spawn, get some enderman in here uh, using infinity dust. And try and kill them before you run out of... Um... Oh. Yeah, before... <laughs> Why are you exploding? Try and kill them before they actually teleport out, is what I was going to say. So I'm going to do that until I've got a couple, maybe, or I can reconstitute some from Ender Dust, and we'll use that to uh, to make some more bits and pieces. So back in a second. 
One thing to note when you are spawning things in, one of the possible spawns is a compressed silverfish. If you see one of those and you hit it with your ender or any other weapon and kill it, just be aware that it's compressed silverfish, so it'll explode into nine other silverfish. Um, if you want a panic-inducing time, that's a good way to actually do it. Uh, in my case, I did actually get rid of them all before they managed to storm me. Uh, I had about three hearts left, but uh, other than that, <laughs> it's fine. And we've got a vibrant alloy ingots here. So we're going to split that down into nuggets. The nuggets are going to get combined with an emerald, uh, like this. And that gets us a vibrant crystal. The vibrant crystal can come over here with this anvil. And I assume we can combine it this way. Yep, and we get a an empowered ender. And that lets us basically stop Enderman from teleporting. Of course, they will only do that once uh, once I actually have some power in here. So, although I have this, I don't yet have any power generation. Can we actually power it up inside of Sterling? I don't think we can. So we're going to need to just uh, basically create something. So I want a capacitor. Okay, remember there is a quest to get an upgraded capacitor once you've got a basic one. So I'm going to need to just get some redstone and four basic capacitors. So this is copper, gold, and grains of infinity. Of course, we've got uh, pretty much some supply of that. How much gold do I have? Do I have any gold? I do have gold ore pieces. The U will do for that. 16 gold incoming. And uh, what was the rest? Um, basic capacitors. Copper ingot, which I've got some of. So let's just get... Uh, four and then just grains of infinity which i've got a lot of it's all automated so that's easy where's my grains of infinity gone ah oh, there's some in my inventory i did convert a lot into infinity dust let's just get some more from here half stack or so there's our gold so uh let's just convert some of the gold across um so that's nine eighteen should be enough yep and let's create for basic capacitors. With those, we should be able to combine that with just some redstone. Uh, do I have any redstone left? Yeah, I have more than enough. Well, just. There's some more in the other, the other crate. Don't need to worry about it. And there we get a basic capacitor bank. Okay, and then that will just let me do some more power storage, basically. That's what the, my main reason for this. But I can then upgrade it to get the vibrant capacitor bank which is a much greater power storage. So let's go and put that down the stairs. So we've got some kind of powers stored. There we go. And this thing should start building up. Yeah, there it is. It's building up at exactly the rate that, well, it's building up higher than this rate, which is interesting. <laughs> However, this also still won't let us actually charge stuff up, but it will let me store power rather than potentially waste it from here. So I need something to charge things up. Let's see if there's a charger. Uh, looks like there is from Applied Logistics. Two is the one from Ender.io. Wired charger charges items with uh, power, scales with the size of the items, energy storage. Fine, so wired charger just needs some electrical steel and industrial machine chassis, which we've made before. We know how to make these. So uh, let's just get a couple of those things done. Uh, are you just going to need... Oh, you need explicitly the iron alloy. So let's just get five of you and five tin. I've got to avoid, hmm, let's get rid of tin and use aluminium. I just want to avoid the possibility of getting bronze. Um, <laughs> you can hear the Enderman warping around. That's one of the, the downsides. They When you don't have a powered Ender, they just decide to warp all over the place. So let's get some more iron and we can just shift K it to uh, just basically compress everything. Put the iron in here, and that will get us everything we need. There we go. And another batch. Okay, so aluminium, copper, iron. That will make us our iron alloy, and then we can combine the rest. What else does this charger need? Electrical steel is just iron. We can pulverize coal and silicon, and silicon in turn is just clay and we can get other stuff as well but mainly just clay or sand of any kind sand is probably the easier thing i do i have enough sand no i've got a terrible amount of sand six that's not good at all uh do i have any more in here i do let's put you in there as well and we should have quite a lot of silicon available so that's going to be quite easy let's get this first thing done so let's grab you and let's convert all of that 
yeah let's get, get into that mode and then let's get some more of the industrial dye blender whatever it's called there it is and we'll get all of those made one and two and we can make some more ender IO machines that way then we'll make the rest into uh basically into electrical steel of which i'm going to need do we have a, an enderman no <laughs> I don't know where they're teleporting around to. It must be in these side rooms. Uh, it's really annoying me that the actual noise they make, but other than that, we can sort it out. Uh, so we've got plenty of polarized coal. I just basically need uh, nine iron ingots. I don't want to put the coal in next because that will convert over into regular steel. If you do that, be warned. Uh, so we want the silicon in next. And yeah, that'll do. And then some of the polarized coal. So let's get that done and make sure i have just enough to start generating electrical steel okay so that should be done in a second which means all i need to do is put this in place and we should be able to get the wired charger uh yes that'll be fine uh we can upgrade a simple wired charger but we're going to go straight for the the main version i don't want to actually worry about that at all so that will be done in a second and here it is there we go, and there you should be done. I need eight of the nine, but that's fine. Wire charger can go downstairs as well. Okay, and you're going to need another capacitor. Do I have any spare ones? Do I have any like the double layer ones that aren't great but good enough for this purpose? Uh, capacitor. Nothing in that crate. Yeah, I've got some double layer ones and an octatic. I'm just going to go for a basic actually. And let's turn that mode off. There we go. Now will you charge? You will. So it's going to go up to 100,000. And there it goes. It's fully charged. Good. So uh, there are some more things we can do. Uh, adding basic capacitor on eight levels gets us empowered too. Travel, direct, etc. I'm not sure what each of those effects are. It's been a while. Uh, empowered too, however, it just gives it more power. So that's good. I'm not sure if it increases the damage but it's worthwhile checking and it only needs a basic capacitor on eight levels of course i did just grab that basic capacitor let me just go and grab that uh, double layer one um we're probably going to be using these anyway for the upgrade to the 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 end of sword uh where was it it's in up in here wasn't it so let me just swap this around and put you in there we need the sword wherever that is yeah and eight levels so if you have a look i've got 25 levels so we should be able to combine that and a basic capacitor and there it goes so yes it is increasing damage as well yeah, that was saying plus one attack damage in blue there now it says plus two attack damage so that's good and um that's pretty good so double a capacitor in 12 levels is the next one i could upgrade to that and in fact i probably should so let's just grab that octatic and we'll make sure that the wire charger has the octatic instead there we go and then we can go over here and upgrade this thing again. So ender, double layer, and it now has plus three attack damage and 250,000. So that's pretty good. And we can now charge it up. So you're going to charge it pretty quickly. It's going to basically pull everything out of this vibrant capacitor bank, but we have pretty much a lot of power storage now. That is done. Durability probably needs a bit of a repair, but um, I don't need to worry about that just yet. We can also uh, enchant it later and pretty good so yeah i'm happy with that anyone's got any suggestions for further upgrades feel free to put them in the comments below i do want to just mention another pack i was looking at called glacial awakening i got recommended it by a commenter saying that it's very much like this that you start off in a small space and expand but in a very very different way it's sort of like you're stuck in um if you like stone block except you're stuck in a very cold little miniature cave and uh, if you dig up you get to snow you dig down you get to water and uh, you start off with not very much high tech at all, but very, very different recipes to actually get stuff. For example, sticks you can only get by throwing torches into water. And yes, you might think, well, how do you get torches? Ah, <laughs> roots. Um, it, sometimes, sometimes Minecraft logic work, works, sometimes it does not. So I will be looking at that uh, pretty soon, actually. Uh, maybe doing a few episodes and see which one you guys actually like. I quite like, quite like this so far. And it's not very long. There's, there's obviously only a few more quests to go in this one tab. Uh, I do need to get one more uh, ender pearl in order to get that pulsating iron, 
which will let me get to the quests. Uh, do I have enough ender dust? I do not. So I'm just going to get some ender dust and then we'll close off by getting through this quest and get some item conduit and then maybe just taking out what else opens up. I don't think there'll be much else over here in Ender IO. And here we go. Final thing. Just both of those. Get some pulsating iron out of this and we'll just process the rest of the iron. Uh, this happens to be pretty fast at getting it. So there we go. And that should get us the quest. It does. And that's going to get us some more item conduit. Very, very handy and much better than, well, personal preference, but much better than thermal expansion for me. And that's going, <laughs> it's a quest called Bob Ross. Really? Uh, okay, so conduit binder composite. Um, fine, let's take a look at that. So composite binder composite is just going to be sand, gravel and uh, clay, isn't it? So lots of gravel, uh, a little bit of sand and some clay. So we have all of that clay. Um, gravel, I have probably, well, five stacks of, so that's not going to be a problem. It's mainly going to be sand because I haven't really, oh, there we've got some more red sand that's been processing for me. Uh, I could just put some gravel in here and that will actually produce sand for me. It won't go anywhere because I don't have any other storage, but that's actually fine. It's exactly what I want in this case. So that's going to start producing sand. And uh, we only need, we only need a very small amount for this. So this is actually going to be done in a second. Um, probably will be enough. Are you going to be enough? Four. Let's just go and make the binder composite. Yep, 16. That should be it, I think. Yep. Gives us yet a wrench, which is handy. Very useful for Ender IO. Come on. Oh, second page. Oh, okay. So you're going to want energy conduit and pressurized fluid conduit. I think it gave us, it gave us some ender conduit, uh, uh, energy conduit, but I think it's the... Um, the next tier up it gave us, uh, where are you? You're in here somewhere. Conduit. Conduit. There you are. Yes, it's the enhanced version. So we can't use that to just cheat the quest, unfortunately. Uh, we are getting a few fair amount of item conduit, though. So let's just uh, make that in the normal way. Energy conduit and pressurized fluid. So energy conduit. Conduit. Is just going to need some conduit binder, which is fine, and some conductive iron, which it was asking us to make for the next, for the previous quest. That's fine. And pressurized fluid is probably going to require the um, the pressure the the iron I was just making the the pulsating iron maybe. Uh, so fluid conduit is actually just quite clear glass, and I never remember how to make this by itself. Quite clear glass. What's the original recipe? Uh, Give me the, the original recipe, please. <laughs> this is just terrible. I hate this every time. I always forget how to actually get back to the original recipe. And there's 58 pages of it. Uh, one second. It's fine. I was on the wrong page anyway. It just need, need some glass and an aloe smelter. So that is pretty easy for us to do and get both of those. So I'm just going to make some more conductive iron. Uh, we'll have some more iron there, and we just need some redstone for this. So let's just get four redstone, uh, four redstone, and four iron as well. That'll be more than enough, I'm sure. And we'll just get the other bits and pieces. So got some glass, and we'll put that through the smelter. That's two. I actually only want one here. So I'll just recover that. Three. And the composite binder we're also going to need to cook up as well, but that uh, the conduit binder even. Um, yep, and that's normally pretty fast, but it's not quite as fast in this pack. More than enough to actually get us going. So conduit binder is like that. This in the middle, and we get some energy conduit. That's enough for the quest, I hope. Yep, and then just pressurize fluid. So once again, pressurized fluid conduit is more conduit binder with some fused quartz and the original fluid conduit, which is just quite clear glass. Do I have enough... Um, yeah, I should have enough of that. I just need quite clear glass now. You can just dump in there. And hopefully we've got some more sand. Yeah, lots. And we'll just get that made into regular glass. It might come through. Oh, no, it doesn't come through as that. It comes through as regular glass, maybe. Yeah, it does. So we'll just take that back out. And put it back in again. Okay. So quite clear glass. Or was it um, Was it quite clear glass? Let's give it a go. Yep, that's some of the original. That goes in the middle. Let's go around the outside and then it just needs what fused quartz and that is just some nether quartz 
in one of here. So let me just get to one, two, three, four, and that should be enough. Oh, that's just one. <laughs> there we go. We need two at least. And this is a substitute for any hardened glass recipes that you find as well. So that should be that. Pressurized fluid conduits, and we have some more left over. So there we go with that quest. It gets us yet a wrench, and then it unlocks the Bob Ross quest, which, as you might imagine, is a painting machine quest. And that gets us facades. But to be honest, in this pack, we're not really going to be using facades, I don't think. Uh, so, yeah. Um, what I'm just hoping for is... I'm going to have to go into a thermal expansion. I'm going to have to get through these. I'm going to do some of them off camera. And we're going to do it next episode where I'm going to get towards wherever the end game quest is. Because I want to break into actually additions. And we, and I've been doing it one per episode, but this time... I haven't really got around to the, the quest needed to get another pick to get through this wall. So we'll do that next time as quickly as I possibly can. And then we can open up pretty much all the utility mods first. And then Britannia can be last. And that will hopefully open up another one of those corner rooms. Next time, we're also probably going to get into AE2. Just get away from all this sort of um, inventory shenanigans. Uh, we, we want something that's nice and easy to store stuff in rather than something that's hard and... Uh, harder and harder to actually find stuff so i'm done for now we've got a sword that is upgraded at least a couple of levels we've got a much faster lava generation system fast enough to keep that going and permanently keeping us in however many, much obsidian that we want so that's good as well we've got blazing pyrothene underneath there um, i have enderman wandering around and i have not managed to restrict in location yet so i'm really does anything for teleport no um that chance to teleport attackers away, that's not what I want. I want to stop them from actually moving. I can never remember the name of it. It looks like a torch. I used it in stone block. If anyone remembers the name of the item that stops Enderman teleporting at all, do let me know. I'm not sure if it's in this pack. And put it in the comments below. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the episode. We're going to get uh, more of the thermal expansion machines done next time. And I'll probably use some more of these as well. We're certainly going to need more gears. And I'll see you for that. In the meantime, enjoy the station news coverage on the channel. And maybe that new pack, the Glacial Awakening. I might uh, do a few episodes of that, see if you like it as well. All right, thanks a lot. See you next time.